Don't forget about love and purpose. Service is the mission, baby. Listen with love. Listen with love. Listen with love. Listen up. Talk to your kids. Ask them what's up. And listen up with listen up with listen up with love. Listen with love. Listen with love. Listen with love. Kick it with your kids. Remember you were one. And listen up with love. Hello, I'm Cindy Ehrenberg Seltzer, President and CEO of the Children's Services Council of Broward County. Welcome to another episode of Future First, Focus on Broward's Children. Today, we're shedding light on the importance of fathers and father figures in the family structure. Fatherhood is a cornerstone of family life and society, playing a vital role in the development and well being of children. Their presence and active involvement contribute to a child's emotional, cognitive, and social growth. In fact, research shows that children with involved fathers tend to perform better academically, have better emotional and psychological well-being, and are less likely to engage in risky behaviors. Becoming an engaged dad has benefits for fathers, too. Engaged dads set goals and achieve greater success. Healthy habits become more important and self-esteem increases as dads see their value. Here to discuss the immense importance of fatherhood in shaping future generations and fostering healthy, well-rounded individuals are Eric Chisholm, Broward School's Director of Talent Acquisition and Operations, and Jean-Robert Menard, Healthy Families Fatherhood Program Supervisor, and Arlene Connolly Drummond, CEO of IC Group. Welcome, thank you all for being here. I am so excited to discuss this topic. I'm gonna to start with you, Arlene, as the woman on the panel, but co-chair of the Fatherhood Men and Boys Committee of the Children's Strategic Plan. So I'd like you to explain both why you took that role on and what the Fatherhood Men and Boys Committee is. Sure, thank you, Cindy. Well, the Fathers, Men and Boys Action Committee is comprised of multiple organizations and groups here in Broward County who are all passionate about what's going on with our boys, our men, and our fathers. And I started this committee because I have seen firsthand from working over 30 years with youth and families the impact of what's happening when our fathers are absent and the struggles that our children face when they're struggling to figure out dads. And so one of the things that um, we do in our committee is to ensure that boys get the experiences, exposure, opportunities, training, and development they need so that they can grow into healthier, stronger men who become confident and engaged fathers. We believe it starts early and that if we insulate and train and equip our men then they can show up and be what we're expecting. And so people say, why Arlene? Why do you take this on? It's both professional, but also personal. I know what it was and what it experienced to not have an engaged, active, or present dad. Didn't meet my dad till I was in my 40s. Wow. And so, um, you know, even writing my book helped me to unpack all that trauma and hurt and pain. And so this committee is just an organic part of what I do because I get to be the voice and advocate for my young people, which I'm passionate about, and then I get to help strengthen families so that our women are not doing it alone and that we can embrace the role that fathers play, so significant, so essential, because our community is vulnerable when they're absent. Totally. And, you know, I'm a... I'm a mother, my daughter is now 17, and I am fortunate to have a good partner. And I thought many times throughout, as from infancy on, how I don't know how single moms do this. It is so important to have a good partner. And the, the phrase that struck me this morning was that parenting is a team sport, but we don't always think of it that way. And so my men over here, Eric and Robert, tell, tell me how you infuse that team spirit in the men that you're working with, Robert. Well, Jean, it's funny that you say. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> it's funny that you say team because uh, actually the fatherhood program, we're also known as Team Dad. Uh, the team stands for teaching, educating, advocating, and mentoring. And mm -hmm. so those components are what make a well-rounded 
person and a father figure within the home. And so we feel that when we start to educate them, we start to show them just the possibilities that they can be, because a lot of times it's exposure that's lacking within understanding where you fit within the family. You, have, you come from a family that maybe a dad father wasn't present. And even though fathers are sometimes present at home, they're not engaged. And so one thing that we do try to promote is more engagement within the household. Because like Arlene was saying, those formative years, those zero to five, is not only formative when it comes to, you know, educating the child, but it's also instilling all the things that you want to see for them when they become adults. And so one thing that we talk about with the fathers is more engagement, more involvement, things that they can do in order to alleviate some of the stressors that moms have. Because whether you're living in the home or you're not, you still have an impact on how that child develops and how that child grows. And I think it's important to point out, look, parenting is the toughest job you're ever going to have. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that straight out. Yes. It yes. is hard work. But it is also really rewarding. And I think that's often left out of the equation as to how much fun dads can have in this experience of interacting. Yeah, there's some, yes. there's some work around it. <laughs> but it's also, it pays off, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to just piggyback when you think about um, the team sport. Fatherhood is a team sport that you don't get to retire from. You know, when you think about the greatest people around, they don't re they retire, but you do not get to retire from mm -hmm. fatherhood. It is a lifetime sport. It's a lifetime commitment. It's an opportunity to continue to be an influential person in someone's life. They're always watching. And a lot of times, young men and young girls, they may not necessarily say, I need my dad, but they do. And we have to know that they need them and be very present. And again, when I go back to the fact that some people shift to different teams and different sports and different activities, that's what fatherhood is. Your ability to navigate through a variation of sports, mm -hmm. tap into basketball, football, soccer, or whatever it is. And I do want to just put a shameless plug in here and say that I work for the school district. This is my 32nd year with Broward Schools, believe it or not. No I know way. how young I look and <laughs> I am young. But what I will you share with you. started at five, I I'm sure. I did. <laughs> <laughs> at five, let's repeat that. <laughs> the, the other part of it is, is that we recruit for people of all ages, all nationalities, males, females, and it gives you an opportunity to even spend more time with your kids because we have jobs that are may not necessarily be year round but it actually gives an opportunity for you to go to the football games for you to participate in group activities and even if you're not a parent you still have an opportunity to be exposed to so many kids and be the father figure to those kids oh that's a great point i was going to ask you why why is talent acquisition on the panel? <laughs> and that's why. You see how I connect the dots for us already and make sure we all know <laughs> another reason. But think about it. Employment uh, is something that is very challenging for fathers a lot of times. And in my community, I grew up in the 33311 area code, born and raised here. And it's very difficult uh, when you think about jobs and career opportunities. And being in my role, I see a lot of fathers as well who are looking for employment opportunities. So I can stand there, uh, represent the opportunity for a large employer. And by the way, the largest employer in Broward County, when you really look at it, with lots of career opportunities for fathers and That's certainly great. mothers. A good way also to figure out if you want to be a father. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Spend some time with yes. children and really understand what it means to be a father. Yes. <laughs> Arlene, the, uh, we have recently had, by the time this airs, the International Day of In Men International Men's, Men's Day. Day. Yes, I knew I'd mess that up. <laughs> Tell us what that's about. Sure. So International Men's Day, you know, I always share with everyone, we know about International Women's Day. We know the date. We know the celebration in March, we're all ready. But so many people don't know that in 80 countries around the world, on November 19th, annually, we celebrate International Men's Day. And in Broward County, we are shining the spotlight on it here as well. And so thanks to the support of the Children's Services Council and all the members of my committee, we get to bring that to light here. And so International Men's Day is an opportunity for 
us to shine the spotlight on the challenges that men face, as well as identify and celebrate the impact they have on their community and their families. Men are important mm. in our community. Our fathers are valuable. And so International Men's Day focuses on men's health, both mental health, physical health, emotional health. It addresses fatherhood. It addresses um, healthy masculinity. It addresses um, building healthier relationships between men and women. It addresses so many um, areas that we know is important for our community development. And so what we are trying to do here in Broward County is ensure that we take the time on that day and shine the spotlight. And this year's focus, and we've been talking about it, yes. is mm -hmm. Healthy Men, Healthy World. And there is a um, disparity between men's health, between men and women, and our men are dying younger than our women at a larger rate. And so there's a whole initiative looking at how do we help our men to be healthier so we can increase longevity, so they could be there on the team for their children, be grandfathers, yeah. and be present. Yeah. And so um, our focus is to really help do that. And one of our ways we're doing that is helping our men connect to the water and realize mm -hmm. the, the health benefits that are right here surrounding us in South Florida. We have water, and we know one of the areas that um, International Men Day focus on is on the fact that our men in suicide is high. And so when we can help teach and guide and show our men ways that they can um, build healthier coping skills, connect to resources that are right here in their backyard and how to maximize that, but not only that, they get to remember what it's like to bring their children to the beach, bring their children to water, engage in fun activities yes. with yep. their children, and then, of course, what do we do with all of that? Help reduce the drowning rate. Yes. <laughs> yes. Shameless plug for Thaddeus yes. Gamory. There you go. And the work that he's been doing. And this is really, once again, Broward being on the cutting edge because I was just watching a story about this, about men and how men are feeling left behind mm -hmm. in higher education yes. and, and in health, and it's taking a toll. So, Gene, what... What's your role in all of that? What are you doing to help promote men's health? Well, with the promotion of health, men's health, with the 24-7 DAT curriculum that we use with uh, the Team DAT program, it actually does discuss men's health mentally and physically. So we do delve into what their idea of uh, health is, how they want to promote health for themselves. We help them set the goals for those health uh, obstacles, I should say. Because a lot of times, like uh, Eric was saying, the obstacles that they run into are very similar to the ones that moms run into. Transportation, lack of job, lack of insurance. So it's also an understanding of allowing them to see that these programs will also help them. So we do provide the resources and the referral sources for the fathers to go to the other agencies in order to get those items that would be uh, lacking, so to speak for them in order for them to promote better health. We find that uh, one of the stigmas that you will find across uh, when it comes to men's health is even mental health. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of going to see someone to talk about mental health, to talk about your emotions, we're trying to break that stigma down. Uh, I, also the stigma around just a fatherhood program. We want to be known as not a place where you're coming to because there's a problem for you. Because fatherhood programs are not for those who have problems. It's for those to enhance the skills that you already have and provide you with the resources that you may not know exist within the, your community and things that you can benefit from. So at Broward Healthy Start, that's one of the things with the Team Dad program that we want to aim to do is show you the resources, guide you to those resources to mo promote, you know, a better you. Because once you promote a better you, you're there for the family and can do a lot more and, you know, be a part and take part in a lot more. So health would not be an issue for you, whether it's mentally or physically. So then we eliminate those obstacles. I love that. No, Eric, so, it looked like, oh, I'm sorry, Arlene. I was just saying that that is so important, building a community. And that's one of the things that I'm so excited. I always say, Broward, we are resource heavy. Yes. We have mm -hmm. lots of resources. Yes. But the disconnect is that many people don't know they exist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? But when we continue to bring awareness 
and create an environment, an ecosystem. That's one of the things that our committee seeks to do, where fathers feel supported, mm -hmm. they feel valued, they're embraced, and they have equal access to the development, to the resources, to the treatment mm -hmm. that both parents should yes. have when it comes to 100%. their role to be active and engaged parents. Mm -hmm. And so that community is what we as a collective yes. is continuing to build no matter what role we play. You know, when you say the M is mentoring, and I, we talk about you know, mentoring tomorrow's leaders and all the different programs that we have right here in our community to help with that. And that's yes. what Eric does. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> piggyback on both yes. of you all. Good. Looking forward to that. So I wanna start with the mental health. So big, so important, so essential. Uh, I was sharing with them that I started a platform about two years ago called Learned Man on social media. And what I found was, you know, I started out with a thousand followers, now I have 37,000 followers. Wow. Yes. And what I want to share with you, the biggest thing that comes from that is the mental health piece. And I can see the engagement of men and women who are actually looking at the messages that I put out there, whether it's about mental health awareness, whether it's about the suicide rate, whether, whether it's about just just talking and making sure you're expressing what you're going through and not holding it in because you know it's taboo a lot of men a lot of times we don't want to talk about it um, it makes it very difficult sometimes to express because we feel like we're going to be judged and a lot of times on social media which I used to be anti-social media a couple years ago and I'm not anymore because it's an opportunity to share with the world that there are opportunities to take care of yourself and I'm going to tell you mental health health is so big and the things that I get back well I was thinking about doing such and such and this just this nugget that you said gave me a better approach a different way to look at it and mm -hmm. when we think about um, I'm a part of 5,000 uh, male role models and uh, honorary member of mentoring tomorrow's leaders and those are young people who may even have a father at home and some don't but imagine if I'm an extension coming in front of them and seeing, giving a positive influence, sharing with them my story. I had a very rough childhood. Both my parents succumbed to drugs. I was in a foster home. I was moved around and I just made a decision, a conscientious decision that I didn't want to go that way. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go different ways, but I can tell you one of the biggest things was yearning for someone that looked like me, walked like me, sounded like me. So those are the things that I absolutely remember. So the storytelling that we were talking about earlier is very important. When you go in front of young people, tell the story. You may have on a suit today, but it took a long time to get to a suit. But I have knowledge to get you to the suit much faster because I'm sharing my story at a younger age or you're getting it a lot sooner than I got it or was exposed to it. So it's very important that we're doing the storytelling and we were talking about it before coming in here that storytelling is what attracts people mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll, sh I'll kind of close it out with this part when growing up Green Lantern not the, not the, the Green Hornet but I had Green Lantern and I used to focus on that as a positive source of energy because he had a ring that he took the ring and he can make and do anything he wanted to do with the ring which was a positive positive influence to being able to remove negativity and look towards the positive role forward. So that's how I look at it. I, I want to piggyback off something that you said, Eric, when it comes to the mental health. I think part of that is also the inability to communicate one's feelings. Absolutely. Right? And so at a very young age, men are really taught to hold on to those feelings, where little girls are more taught to express those feelings. So it, it turns into a lack of the right words to say and turns more into the physicalness of it. So you'll see that I'm angry, you'll see that I'm upset, but I can't vocalize it. So it, be, it then remains internalized. So I think once we start to yes. talk to the men at a young age, even though older men um, who've grown up with the inability to express themselves, but give them those words in order for them to be able to say how I feel, in a non-judgmental environment, 
And it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to yes. express yourself because no one's going to judge you for feeling a certain way because we all have that right to feel a way. That's when we start to combat a lot of the negative aspects of acting out versus speaking out. Yes. I wish people would understand the power of words yeah. and not the power of just resorting to physical the, the physical manifestation yes. of the frustration that they feel. Mm -hmm. um, yes, words can hurt, but words also can be helpful. Yes. <laughs> they can be so useful. Yes. Correcting misunderstandings, mm -hmm. finding points of agreement, finding points of disagreement, but we need not hurt somebody else because they disagree with us. Sorry, I'm a little obsessed with that at the moment. I, it makes me a little worried about the world that um, we, we turn to violence way too often to resolve conflict. Words, so helpful. So, yeah. you know, recently we had Read for the Record. Yes. And um, yes, yes. <laughs> and I participate in it every year. And I want to point out something about the words and our expressions. So, you know, it was Hispanic Heritage Month as well, mm -hmm. and we had a beautiful book. And so I decided, because kids can relate in so many different ways, I was going to be Enrique Mauricio. My name oh. is Eric Maurice. So I just became this Dominican uh, gentleman, and I went with a guitar, and I read the book, and we played music and everything. And I think they gave me the most challenging, fun class, if you will, <laughs> because they were very engaged once I got there, but before they were not. But one of the things about it, as a man, I had an opportunity to walk into that classroom. Uh, a lot of times we get a lot of respect when we walk in the room as men standing there as male teachers. I remember the male teachers growing up. I would walk in there and I would be less talkative in the male teachers' classrooms mm -hmm. than I would in the female classrooms just because the father figure was there. Now, don't get me wrong. The female teachers were a lot stronger than the male teachers. I will point that out. You, you all commanded the classroom <laughs> a lot different. But I will tell you, you actually see a father fig figure. This is no disrespect to anyone. Mm -hmm. But when a father walks into the room and exudes positive energy, exudes a level of excellence, uh, exudes something that people can really tap into, it just changes the atmosphere of the room. And people just champion it. They mm -hmm. jump. And we just have a lot of fun when we go there. So it is important as fathers, as father figures, that we show up and represent and have the conversation. And having this platform to talk about that and share this information now is very important. So we get it, and everybody starts to just come together as a community because it takes a village to do this work, as we all know. Right. I love you were very careful about not dissing the women, and I think I appreciate that. Absolutely. But... The important thing is that both are, both are essential. Mm -hmm. Both the feminine energy, the male energy, the father figure, the mother figure, all make us who we are. You need to get all of the different pieces. Mm -hmm. We all have it in us, mm -hmm. but we're taught to either suppress a piece or not. And it comes back to that team, which keeps you know, resonating in my, in my brain, that uh, like, like the village, it takes a team. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that we continue to look at, we know one of the things we said as a committee, we, you know, in the Children's Strategic Plan, we look at what works, right? And when we look at what works, we know mentoring works. And no matter what level you are on, whether you are a young boy or a male or a dad, the influence and the impact of a mentor can turn your trajectory in the right direction. And so we wanted to continue to always elevate mentoring and the opportunities to engage mentors. And so when we can um, create more space for men to feel confident. So a lot of reasons why our dads don't show up sometimes, and you'll probably speak to this, is that when men are not confident and they don't feel that they have the tools to be successful, they shy away and they back up. But when our men have to feel confident that they have the tools to step into that role, in that position, they show up. And so as a community, we have the opportunity in programs, in several programs we have around Broward County, to equip them 
with those tools, with that confidence, with those trainings, with those um, opportunities and experience so that they can feel comfortable and confident stepping into the role as dads. And I think one of the things that we can continue to do um, as a community is to create space, create safe space for our dads. When, when I speak to men often, they don't feel that there's a safe space, mm. whether a safe space for me to express my pains, my hurt, my anger, my frustration, um, or a safe space for me to feel comfortable in asking for help, mm. asking for the support I need, asking for the resources that I need, um, whether it's in our governmental systems or wherever they may be, our men um, tend to find it difficult to get the resources that they need. And when we look in our society, our girls are flourishing. They are like leaps and bounds. And our boys and our men are struggling. And I, one of the things in our committee, we look at data. You know, that's what we do at CSC, right? We look at data. And when we were looking at how many males um, arrest, and we saw how many boys were arrested, out of about 1,798 or so were male. But not only just male, they were black male. Yeah. And so what do we do when we can create that systems throughout our schools, programs, so Arlene, I think you're leaving us with a challenge to me <laughs> and to CSC and the community to create more spaces for our dads and yes. our males and a challenge to you, my viewers, to mentor because we need men to step up and mentor. And you can connect to that by reaching out to Hands on Broward. They can connect you or 211 Broward will get you connected to the fatherhood initiative or the school system or the men and boys, the fatherhood men and boys committee. Step up, we need you. Thank you, Eric Chisholm, Jean Robert Menard and Arlene Connolly Drummond for a lively and inspiring conversation. I've been your host, Cindy Arenberg Seltzer. For this or any other episode of Future First Focus on Broward's Children, please go to our website, cscbroward.org where you can access our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and remember to join us next time on Future First, Focus on Broward's Children. Mm -hmm.